Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you another fall DIY, but this one is kind of crafting from my stash. I'm using some of the plaques and some of the items that I've had in my stash to do this DIY, along with a couple of items that I did pick up at Hobby Lobby, some budget-friendly ones that I got at 50% off, let me add. I love this DIY, I love the outcome of it. It is so rustic, it's farmhouse, and most of all, it's got that fall and harvest feel to it that I absolutely love because it is that time of year. So let's not waste any more time, let's jump into it and let's do some DIYing and make some fall and harvest decor for this year, because why not? Most of us are still staying at home anyway, so let's craft from our stash a little bit. Alrighty, so for today's fall DIY, it is going to be a sign and I'm gonna be making it out of these signs here that I had in my stash. And when I say in my stash, I'm not kidding you, these are from last summer. But you know what, signs are signs and what's good about these is Dollar Tree usually has a similar shaped sign all year round. Because I'm going for a longer side, I'm gonna attach these signs together side by side the way you see me doing it here. And to do that, I'm gonna use some of Dollar Tree's Crafter Square wood glue and some of the jumbo popsicle sticks. I went ahead and just cut these up because there's no sense in using the jumbo stick, the full length of the jumbo stick, because then it's just gonna be wasted. So I cut it into threes and got this. I ended up going back and putting one more set of jumbo sticks in another set of three just to really make it a bit more durable. I'm going to be using the back side of these plaques because why not? It's a blank canvas and that way I don't have to worry about covering up the design on the other side. It's easy peasy. I will tell you though that because these signs were sitting in my garage in my stash and because it gets a bit hot out there, I had a bit of trouble taking the stickers off so I ran some sandpaper over the back just to kind of smooth it out but it really doesn't make a difference because it's not going to show because of the way I'm going to be decorating these plaques. You can see here that I am taking some Mod Podge and I am putting a good healthy coat of Mod Podge on these plaques because I picked up this amazing scrapbooking paper at Hobby Lobby. Oh my word does this not just scream Thanksgiving, Fall and Harvest. You can get scrapbooking paper at Hobby Lobby for, for a dollar. That's 25 cents a piece. So even if you're not a scrapbooker or you don't like to collect scrapbooking paper, you can go there and pick up a couple sheets for just one DIY if you wanted to. And so for this DIY, you will need two sheets of 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper. If you wanna use fabric, you can use fabric. If you wanted to paint these, you could, but I like doing alternatives to painting because not everybody likes to paint and this is such a quick, easy way to decorate a plaque. So once I've got this first sheet on, I get a few of you asking me, how do I get bubbles out of the paper that you have that struggle with applying it with Mod Podge? If you just take a towel and just kind of rub over it and keep rubbing over it until that Mod Podge sets, you should be bubble free. It's when you just kind of set it on the Mod Podge and leave it is when it'll kind of wrinkle a bit or it'll bubble. And so you just kind of want to keep rubbing over it until the Mod Podge sets and then you're good to go. And so like I said, you're going to need two pieces of scrapbooking paper for this. On the end of these scraps, you may need to do a bit of patchwork with the paper. So just don't throw away the bottom scraps when you cut them off. I picked up these letters that spell out fall and I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're $1.49 there, but they're not. Really, they're 50% off, so I spent 75 cents on these, which is a great deal. This is a great alternative if you don't have a Cricut. If you have a Cricut, I say cut it out and use cardstock. To paint these letters, I will be using this brown by Craftsmart, and I'm gonna add a bit of the black Waverly paint to it. This is a chalk paint because I wanna deepen 
this brown. I'm using what I have in my stash. I don't want to go out and buy extra colors. A lot of times if you just stick with the basic paint colors and you've got a black and a white and maybe even a brown, you can either darken up your colors or lighten them. Just don't go too heavy handed and just add it bit by bit so you get the color that you're hoping to achieve. And so for this, I'm going with a nice dark walnut brown because I love my earth tones and I'm gonna give these letters a good healthy coat of this brown paint. Once I got the brown on, I was feeling like it was a bit dull, and so since I have this gold metallic puffy paint in my stash, I figured that this would add just a bit of shimmer to it, give it a little bit of pizzazz maybe. And so before the acrylic paint dries, I'm just gonna go ahead and squirt the puffy paint right on the letter and I'm just gonna mix it in with that brown paint. I'm not looking for anything super shimmery or metallic-y. I just want something subtle just to kind of make that muted matte brown, that dull brown kind of go away. See, look how pretty that is. It's brown, but it's got just that subtle tint of that gold metallic shimmer to it, which I'm super happy with. Now that they're dry, I'm just going to go ahead and place my letters where I want them before I glue them down. I'm kind of offsetting them. I'm going off to one side more than the other. I'm not centering them on these plaques because I'm going to be putting a bouquet on the other end of these plaques. Once I had the word fall out, I was kind of thinking that it was missing something and an afterthought was to add happy and y'all to it so it would say happy fall y'all. This is a set of stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree a while ago. When you see stickers like this for a dollar, you just can't pass them up. It's worth putting in your stash because you never know when you're going to use them. And stickers like this at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's are going to cost about three or four dollars. And so for this, it has the word happy, which is great. I can use that, but I need to make the word y'all. And so I'm just going to kind of finagle a way to make that using the words and the letters that are on this sticker sheet. And good thing I didn't throw away my paint and so I'm just going to use a sponge dabber and give these gold letters a nice fresh coat of brown paint. And that is just kind of a hack that you can do with stickers. Even though it may not be the color you like, you can always paint them. And would you look there? Look at how good that turned out. You'd be none the wiser that these were once gold. Now, again, if you've got a Cricut, you're gonna pull out your Cricut and you're gonna cut it out because it's gonna save you money and time because you won't have to paint it. You can use your cardstock. For the other side of this sign, I will be using some flowers. I picked up these mums from the Dollar Tree. Oh wait, that does not say the Dollar Tree, that says Mainstays, so these are from Walmart. Again, if you can't find flowers at the Dollar Tree, you should definitely look at Walmart because they have a great selection of flowers. I'm going to take all of the flowers off of the stem, I'm going to bunch them together, and using some twine, I'm going to disguise the stems with twine just to give it more of a rustic look, kind of finish it off so we're not seeing the plastic stems. And to do that, you're just going to wrap it around. Easy peasy. And I'm just going to hot glue it to the other end here in this space that I left open just for these flowers. And I arranged them in a way that there were some flowers on top, some on the bottom. I didn't do it as a traditional bouquet because I knew I'd be laying it on the sign itself. I'm also going to take some of these flowers that I also had left over in my stash. And these are from the wheelbarrows, the Kelly Barlow version wheelbarrows that I just recently did using the crates from the Dollar Tree. I had these left over. I didn't want to throw them out because I thought I might use them. And look here, I'm using them. So using some hot glue, I'm just going to kind of add these to it to give it, a, I guess, some height, add some dimension, add a bit more color and character, and just make it look a bit more fall. And this bouquet definitely needs one of my twine bows and this bow is about six strands thick and so I'm just going to hot glue it to the base of the stems there. Now don't go thinking we're done with this because this is one of my creations and of course we're going to darken up these edges, add some age to it, add some beauty to it by using 
a brown and black ink pad and a paintbrush with stiffer bristles and I'm just gonna go along the edges, darken them up, give them that cloudy look because I feel like it, again, adds character, it adds dimension instead of just having these clean line edges on your sign. I feel like it gives it a more finished look. And to hang this up, I will be using my go-to method with some twine that has two knots on the end and I'm just gonna hot glue it to the back. Now, because this is for me and I'm keeping it. I'm not gonna finish the back off with any craft paper, but if it's something that you wanna do, you most definitely should do it using the craft paper that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Or if you're gifting it to somebody, you might wanna do that. But because nobody's gonna see the back of this and it's staying here in my stash, in my collection of fall decor, I'm not real worried about it. And just like that, we have got a fall decor sign that we've just DIY'd for just a few dollars that we have made to suit our decor. We got creative and we made this. This is a fall decor sign that you can make outside of the items at the Dollar Tree when they're not carrying fall decor anymore because these are items that you can get at your local craft stores year round. So if you still wanna do some fall DIYs, here's one for you. I hope you all enjoyed today's fall and harvest DIY using items from my stash and a couple of items that you can find at Hobby Lobby that were 50% off. This was such a budget friendly, fun DIY that it's a piece that I'm gonna actually really enjoy putting up and keeping in my home during the fall and harvest season every year. This is one that I'm definitely gonna keep. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because I know I sound like a broken record and I feel like it's just on repeat, repeat, but each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive and bye for now.